Welcome to NASM CPT exam practice test. Our topic today is practice test 4. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. You have a client who is male, 47 years old, who is looking to increase his range of motion, ROM, and decrease tightness in his joints. What is the most beneficial flexibility programming for this client? A. At least 5 minutes after each training session. B. At least 5 minutes for a minimum of 3 days per week. C. At least 10 minutes daily. D. At least 10 minutes for a minimum of 1 day per week. The correct answer is C. At least 10 minutes daily. Explanation. Daily flexibility exercise is the most effective for adults, and at least 10 minutes of stretching is recommended. At a minimum, stretching exercises should be included in exercise programming two to three days each week. Number 2. A male client weighs 210 pound and has a body fat percentage of 21%. What is the weight of his lean body mass? A. 44 pound. B. 166 pound. C. 171 pound. D. 189 pound. The correct answer is B 166 pound. Explanation. To calculate the client's lean body mass, first calculate the weight of his body fat by multiplying his body weight by his current body fat percentage, or 210 multiplied by 0.21, and we get 44.1 pound. Then his lean body mass equals the difference of his body weight and his body fat, so his lean body mass is 210 minus 44.1, or 165.9 pounds. Number 3. What types of training are the most effective way to improve an athlete's stride rate and frequency? A. Cardiovascular, plyometric, and ballistic training. B. Resistance, ballistic, cardiovascular, and plyometric training. C. Sprint, plyometric, and strength training. D. Sprint, plyometric, strength, and ballistic training. The correct answer is D. Sprint, plyometric, strength, and ballistic training. Explanation. Sprint, plyometric, strength, and ballistic training are the best ways to improve an athlete's stride rate and frequency. This comprehensive approach helps the trained athlete to increase acceleration, enhance maximal speed and endurance, and strengthen the lower body. Number 4. Which of the following exercises is not one included in the power level of balance training? A box jump up with stabilization. B single leg windmill. C multiplanar hops with stabilization. D squat jump with stabilization. The correct answer is B single leg windmill. Explanation. The single leg windmill is an exercise in the stabilization level of balance training. The power level includes multi-planar hops with stabilization, box jump ups and jump downs with stabilization, and squat jumps with stabilization. Number 5. What is the appropriate length of time for the cool down phase of a training session? A. 2 to 4 minutes. B. 3 to 5 minutes. C. 5 to 10 minutes. D. 10 to 15 minutes. The correct answer is C. 5 to 10 minutes. Explanation. The cool down portion of the training session should be between 5 and 10 minutes in length, depending on the client and the intensity of the active phase of training. It begins with a slow decrease in activity and concludes prior to the final flexibility and abdominal work. Number 6. Which muscles are stretched by pressing the hands while clasped together behind the back and the hands behind back stretch? A. Erector spinae and piriformis. B. Sternocleidomastoid and spleni. C. Triceps brachii and latissimus dorsi. D. Anterior deltoids and pectoralis major. The correct answer is D. Anterior deltoids and pectoralis major. Explanation. The hands behind back stretch lengthens the front of the chest. The anterior deltoids and pectoralis major muscles. The erector spinae and piriformis are both stretched in the pretzel position, and the sternocleidomastoid and spleni are lengthened by neck flexion and extension. 
The triceps brachii and latissimus dorsi are specifically targeted in the behind neck stretch, reaching one arm over the shoulder and pushing at the elbow with the opposite hand. Number 7. In terms of reversibility of resistance training, what is the rate at which an individual will lose his or her strength if the client completely stops resistance training at any point? A. One half the rate it was gained. B. One third the rate it was gained. C. One fourth the rate it was gained. D. One third total mass in the same time it was gained. The correct answer is A. One half the rate it was gained. Explanation. A client will lose strength and changes in muscle size at a rate of one half the rate it was gained. For example, a client who increases his or her bench press by 50% over the course of 10 weeks will lose half that strength gain in 10 weeks and all of that gain in 20 weeks. Number 8. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation PNF, is the type of stretching that has which specific advantage? A. It stretches the muscles using strong momentum. B. It stimulates the Golgi tendon, allowing a deep second passive stretch. C. It activates the stretch reflex. D. It closely mimics the activities of daily living and emphasizes functional movements. The correct answer is B. It stimulates the Golgi tendon, allowing a deep second passive stretch. Explanation. PNF is an effective form of stretching because it is specifically designed to activate the Golgi tendon, using the body's own reflexes to allow a deeper stretch on a second, more passive, attempt. Ballistic stretching is the type that uses momentum to move muscles through their range of motion, stretching them to the limit. Static stretching focuses on the stretch reflex, however, the reflex is to be avoided by moving through a slow stretch, only to the point of minor discomfort. Dynamic stretching uses movements that mimic those of daily living. Number 9. Stress management is an important part of any good program. As a trainer, you should encourage clients to participate in stress-reducing activities such as massage therapy or guided imagery, which decreases catecholamine and cortisol production from which gland? A. Adrenal. B. Apocrine. C. Ecrine. D. Sebaceous. The correct answer is A. Adrenal. Explanation. The adrenal gland is responsible for production of cortisol, also known as the stress hormone. Mind-body exercise such as yoga as well as stress-reducing activities help reduce the cortisol produced by the adrenal gland, therefore lowering stress levels. The apocrine, ecrine, and sebaceous glands are all located on the skin and are sweat glands. Number 10. A client who is incorrectly performing a resistance training movement would likely benefit most from which cues to correct form? A. Imagery, affirmational, and visual. B. Alignment, safety, and tactile. C. Visual, wrong or right, and tactile. D. Breathing, visual, and motivational. The correct answer is C. Visual, wrong or right, and tactile. Explanation. A client who has improper form during a certain movement would most benefit from visual cues shown on your own body, wrong or right cues, moving your own body in and out of the correct position, and tactile cues, using a hands-on method, to correct the form. Imagery is best used in yoga or meditation to elicit an emotion or thought in the client. Safety cues are informational, but would not be the best way to describe a corrective motion. Affirmational or motivational cues are used as encouragement and to energize. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.